bless the Lord Jesus Christ. We are thankful once again for another wonderful opportunity for us to be here at Word of Promise Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is a live recording. It's uh, not a live, uh, live stream, but it's a live recording uh, that I'm putting out there. I was intending on putting it out on Wednesday, but I just didn't uh, have time. Uh, to do so so i'm going to be releasing this on friday on this friday uh, but i will be back on next wednesday to uh, stay consistent with our wednesday day of releasing these unwinding twisted scriptures and so again i thank you for coming and uh, being a part and uh, checking out what it is that we do over here at word of promise ministries and the main thing that we do is preach jesus not just y'all but we <laughs> we all need Jesus and so we here at Word of Promise attempt to present Jesus Christ to the world in truth to whomever is placed before this uh, video or any other video or any time or any opportunity that we have we attempt to present Jesus to people because again what he has accomplished and what he has done for us through him coming to live the perfect life a life that we couldn't live and dying for our sins and, and accomplishing a death and a payment in him dying for our sins that we couldn't pay we couldn't there was nothing that we could do that could make up for the wrong that we have done uh, that we've done in the past that we did now we do now and that we'll do in the future there's nothing that we could do uh, to repair that relationship with God so God came down in flesh himself and died and paid the price for us for what we couldn't do uh, but he didn't just stay there he didn't stay dead uh, he was then carried away into the grave and that's a picture of our sins which were placed on Jesus being carried away and placed in the grave put away and so that God could say as those sins were put away uh, on Jesus Christ that's how far I have placed my sins from among you as far as the east is from the west that's how far I've placed my your sins from among me uh, so that again there's no barrier between us but I, he didn't stay there he didn't stay in the grave he was then raised from the dead left our sins in the grave where they were and now sits at the right hand of God replacing our sins before God with his righteousness with his perfect righteousness with the perfect work that he accomplished and what he did in dying and being buried and then being raised from the dead after he lived the perfect life he now sits at the right hand of God to intercede for us so that we can always be in right relationship with God even if we fall on our face tomorrow even if we just fell on our face right before this video uh, uh, we started watching uh, he died for us and and there's nothing now that can separate us from this right standing that we have before God because he sits at the right hand of God but it doesn't stop there with him also sitting at the right hand of God and, and, and him being our righteousness he is also the source of life and power and strength and the one whom we can look to and trust in and depend in this resurrected Savior who sits at the right hand of God we can look to him to do this work and cause this great work in our lives to change us in a way that we couldn't change ourselves no matter how hard we tried no matter how much willpower we try to use to say we're going to get ourselves together and fix ourselves and be better and do this and do that, it never works in regard to God's standard. Yeah, us and our own thinking of what, again, our standard is and what we may feel we're doing pretty well, uh, we may be able to reach that. But if we are truly honest with, with the standard that we know in our hearts, again, that we fail to meet, then again, we'll cling to Jesus as that resurrected Savior, the one who's there to help and to strengthen and to empower. And we here at Word of Promise Ministries are here for the purpose of helping people to understand this and to realize what it is that Jesus Christ has provided for you, whether you are an unbeliever that needs to come to faith so that you can find this right relationship with God and this change, or you are one who has believed in Jesus Christ, who now needs to be edified and developed and to grow up in the truth 
and what it is that Christ has provided for you. That's our heart's goal here at Word of Promise Ministries. And I'm thankful that you would take the time to come and watch. I appreciate that. And I hope that you're being edified with what it is that we have to say. And so uh, with what it is that we have to say on these particular Wednesdays, again, this today is a Friday that I'm uploading this. But on these particular Wednesdays, we are in a series where we're uh, that we've named and called Unwinding Twisted Scripture. And what we've wanted to do with this is take the time to go through many of the scriptures that we have read, heard, preached to us, heard, taught to us in a way that uh, was incorrect. And it was ultimately not just non-beneficial, but harmful in the interpretation that we received in many of these scriptures that have been twisted. And so what we want to do here is take the time to go through a lot of these scriptures to present the truth of what it is that uh, God is attempting to say in it and ultimately glorify Jesus in it. Because that's what all the scripture is there to do, to again, reveal Jesus Christ and glorify him. And so that's what we have been wanting to do. And our foundation scripture for this particular series is found over here in Second Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 15. And it reads this way. It says, and consider, and this is in the middle of a thought um, by Peter, but he says, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. It says, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things. And here it is, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do the also the rest of the scripture. And so this scripture here, written by Peter, talks about the fact that there are untaught and unstable people who take the scriptures, who take Paul's writing and the rest of the scriptures, and they twist them to their own destruction. And it's not just their destruction, but it's also to the destruction of those that listen to and hear what these individuals are proclaiming incorrectly, yet using these scriptures. And so again, what we've wanted to do is go through a lot of these scriptures that we have heard and seen misused uh, that again have been harmful, we believe, to the body of Christ and to the world that has uh, listened to these things presented to them. And we wanted to present them in a way that again is beneficial and edifying and glorifying to Jesus Christ. And so what we have been looking at lately as a scripture that people have twisted is over here in 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 3. And it says this, it says, Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. And another scripture that's very similar to that uh, that has been twisted is over in 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 and 3, where it says, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. And what we've talked about with these scriptures is the fact that there are many individuals out there who don't have a, quite an understanding of what it means to no longer live uh, by the Old Testament law and that we are not called to live by the law. But they use these scriptures and say, see, this here says that if you keep his commandments uh, and anyone who does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. And if we do keep his commandments, that is proof that we know him. And that, as it says in 1 John 5, that we love God. Uh, and, and that uh, we keep his commandments and that his commandments are not burdensome. And they are speaking of the Old Testament uh, commandments. But this scripture isn't speaking 
of the Old Testament commandments. And so we've been attempting to go through that to show uh, exactly what is John speaking of here when he's talking about these commandments. Uh, the fact that we know that we know him by the fact that we keep his commandments. Again, his commandments are not burdensome and that this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And so again, what we've done with this uh, portion of the series is the first thing we wanted to do was prove the fact that he is not talking about the Old Testament commandments as commandments that we are called to keep. And we looked over here in Romans chapter 7, starting at verse 6, where it says here, and this, this is again in the middle of a thought. I'm not going to go through that whole study again, but I do want to just show exactly what uh, we talked about or show a little bit of what we talked about and it says here but now we have been delivered from the law having died to what we were held by that law in this context he's about to show is the, the law of God in the Old Testament which contained the Ten Commandments he says here we've been, been delivered from it through death or as a result of us dying uh, to the law and he says the purpose of it is so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter so there is this new way that is of the spirit and that of the spirit is of the spirit of God and that that we serve God now and not in the oldness of the letter the oldness of the letter is again he's about to show that but it's speaking of the Old Testament commandments that we are no longer called to live by. But then what look at what he goes on to say. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Now why he asking why is he asking that question? Because he just talked about the fact that we've died to the law and we are delivered from it. So the first thought that a person is going to have is okay, is the law sin then, Paul? Is that what you're saying? That the law is sin? And he so he asked that that uh what do they call it? Um a um Oh, goodness. What kind of question is that? Rhetorical. He asked the rhetorical question of what shall we say then? Is the law sin? He, and then he answers that by saying, certainly not. He says, on the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. So it, it clearly shows here when he speaks of law back in verse 6 that we've been delivered from and that we've died to. He's clearly speaking of the law uh, that, contain, that, that he says here that he knew sin through and that he, it showed him. And he says he would not have known covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet. Now, what law says you shall not covet? Well, the law that contains the Ten Commandments. So he's clearly talking about the Old Testament law as the law that we are delivered from. And we died to. And he goes on to say what in verse eight. Uh, let me read seven again so that you can see the continuation. He says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet. But then he says, but sin taking opportunity by the commandment. What commandment? The commandment he just spoke of that was contained in the law, which was you shall not covet. He says, what happened? Sin took opportunity by that commandment to do what? To produce in me all manner of evil desire. He says, for apart from the law, that sin is dead. Sin was dead. Sin is dead, meaning it can't produce all manner of evil desire in you when it doesn't have a commandment or, a, or the law to use and take an opportunity to do that work on the inside of you and so again he paul shows us here and it goes on in the rest of romans 7 to show that what that there's a reason why we don't live by the old testament law anymore is because that sin that dwells in us will uses it in order to produce the actual desires to do the things that we don't want to do and so that was the first thing we attempted to show in showing that John isn't speaking of the Old Testament commandments when he's speaking of that. Because Paul clearly shows here that those commandments, the Old Testament ones, 
are a part of the oldness of the letter and something that we have died to. And so we showed that in our first teaching on that. And then the next thing we want to show is that we want to talk about and show, okay, what is then the commandments that we are called to live by uh, um, in now, as a New Testament believer, and one of the first things that we are called at to obey as a commandment is the command to believe, to believe. And look at what it says over here in Romans chapter 16, starting at verse 25. It says, now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. So he says, Paul says that that God is able to establish a person uh, 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 according to the gospel or on the basis of the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. He says, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. So this revelation of Jesus Christ, this preaching of Jesus Christ, which is now revealed, this good news of Jesus Christ, he said, had been kept secret since the world began, but now it is made manifest. Meaning this good news of what Jesus Christ has done is now presented and made manifest and preached and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations. Now, why? Why uh, is this good news of what Jesus Christ uh, made known to all the nations? And he says, what? Well, this is according to the commandment of the of the everlasting God. So it was God's command that this message go forth and be presented and be preached. But why? Why did God command this to happen? He says, for the obedience to the faith. Why did now God command for this message of what Jesus Christ has done to go forth? is so that the nations that this is made known to could then obey the command of believing in Jesus. And this is what we talked about as the initial command uh, of us as believers in Jesus Christ is, is to believe. To trust in Jesus Christ and to live by faith in him. And this is what, again, even in the context of First John, well, after we read in verse two of what it said about the obeying the commandments. Well, in chapter three, uh, he shows us what those commandments are. And he says in First John, chapter three, verse 22, he says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him. Why? Because we keep his commandments. Now, this is the same uh, uh, John. He was talking about commandments in chapter two. Now he's saying in chapter three, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And here it is. Verse 23. He tells us what those commandments are. He says, and this is his commandment. What is it? That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. And so we showed here again that in that context of chapter two, he goes on in verse three to tell us what that commandment is that you will know that you know him by that, that you'll know that you know him. As he says here, if we keep his commandment, that commandment is to believe and to love. The commandment is to believe, as he says in first John chapter two, again, that what now we know now by this, we know that we know him if we keep his commandment. Well, in first John chapter three, he tells us what that commandment is. It is to believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he gave us commandment. And so what we've been talking about as of late, because that was one of the things we mentioned was the fact that that initial uh, um, command that we obey is the commandment to believe. But then he also mentions love here as well. And what we've talked about is that in between those two, sandwiched in between faith in Jesus Christ and faith on the name of Jesus Christ and love, it other commandments that are going to be a byproduct of the commandment of faith 
the commandment of believe. There are going to be other commandments that are sandwiched in that, that ultimately are a byproduct of obeying the first command, which is to believe. And, and this is what Paul talks about, the fact that the things that he says and he writes are the commandments of the Lord. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37 and 38. It says, if anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. And so in this context, of course, he was talking about prophesying and, and other things and him giving instruction in that. But in it, even in that, he's saying the things that he writes, the things that he presented uh, as things to obey are the commandments of the Lord. And what we talked about is the fact that those commands that Paul gave, specific commands that he gave are commandments that are a byproduct of faith there aren't things that are separate from faith it's not okay have faith in in christ and then obey these commands here no those these commands are a byproduct of faith in christ and we looked at a couple of them we looked over here in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 look at this command that paul gives to these galatians he says i say then this is a command walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He gives them a command to walk in the spirit. And so we talked about the fact of walking in the spirit is as we see over here what the spirit does in John chapter 16, specifically verse 14, where he says that this is what the spirit of God is going to do. Uh, Jesus says, Jesus says that he is going to glorify me because he's going to take of what is mine and he's going to declare it to you. He's going to take the things that belong to me, take who I am, what I've accomplished, what I've provided, and he's going to declare it, reveal it, open up your eyes to see it. Now, why, again, is he doing that? So that you can believe on Jesus according to those things that you have been that have been declared to you. Well, walking in the spirit is simply walking, allowing the spirit of God to reveal the wonderful truths of who Jesus Christ is and what he's done so that you can live by faith in him. So walking in the spirit is nothing more than uh, 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 than you doing exactly what you're doing in living by faith in Jesus. You're just allowing the spirit to reveal the truth of Christ to you and who he is and what he's done. That's walking in the spirit. And you're obeying that when you live by faith in Jesus. See, that's what you're doing. And not only that, but as you live by faith in Jesus, and I didn't put it up here, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it talks about how now as you behold the glory of the Lord Jesus, as you allow all of that truth that has been declared to you of who he is and what he has done, as you allow that truth in your heart by faith, then what's going to happen? It says that the spirit of God is going to transform you into the same image. He's going to, again, do this work on the inside of you. See, that's all walking in the spirit is. And it is a direct uh, byproduct of faith in Christ, of you allowing faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You allowing that truth of Christ to be imparted into your heart. And so you obey this command by Paul uh, to say what well, he says, walk in the spirit. You obey this command when you again allow this wonderful good news of what Jesus Christ has done to be revealed to you by the spirit of God. And as you and as you and you live by faith in him, according to that, that's all walking in the spirit is. And he says here and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But look at what he says in verse 16 of Galatians 5 he says I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh he says look another byproduct he didn't say walk in the spirit and then make sure you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh no if you walk in the spirit you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh oh that's so important because again that's where we start to talk about change and a different life 
that we start to live. Well, it comes from obeying the command of walking in the spirit. And you obey that command when you again allow the truth of Christ to be poured into your heart by faith. And so another example Paul gave is over here in Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 8, where he says this. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Look at this command. Walk as children of the light. He says, for the fruit of the spirit. And again, that word spirit that uh, it would have been better translated uh, as fruit of the light. Meaning the byproduct of the light of you walking as a child of the light is in all goodness, righteousness and truth. So Paul, again, gives another command where he says, walk as a child of the light. And he says what the fruit of that is going to be goodness and righteousness and truth that you're going to operate in. He didn't say walk as a child of the light and then make sure you do goodness and righteousness and truth. No, those things are a byproduct. That's why they're called fruit of the light. Again, these, this goodness, this righteousness, and this truth is a fruit, a byproduct of walking as a child in the light. And so he says, obey that command. Well, again, that command is directly connected to the command of believing in Jesus. Now, why do I say that? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. He says, again, this is in the middle of a thought, just for time's sake. Uh, he says, whose minds... The God of this age has blinded who do not believe. Now, look at what he says. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. He's talking about, again, these individuals who aren't saved. Again, who the enemy is blinding and keeping them from, again, allowing the gospel to be poured into their hearts. Well, he calls that gospel a light. So think about it now. When you allow the light of the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ, to be poured into your heart, how do you do that? By believing this message. By believing this truth. Well, that light now is going to be poured in and shine on you. And then that's what, and then you walking in that truth of that revealed light of the gospel of Jesus Christ that revealing of who Christ is and what he's done and the good news of what he's provided for you when you allow that to work in your heart and you live your life on the basis of that truth that is you walking as a child of the light that's what it means to walk in the light is now you walk in the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. You allow the truth of what he's done and he's accomplished to be the filter through which you see life, you see people, you see yourself, you see God, you see everything. You see it through the filter of who Jesus is and what he has done. That's walking as a child of the light. Well, you do all of that when you live by faith in Jesus Christ, when you trust in him. See, that is the, that, Walking as a child of the light is the byproduct of now living by faith in Christ. And this is why I say that these things and many other things are what are sandwiched in between what 1 John chapter 3 uh, verse 23 mentions as God's commandments of believing on the name of his son Jesus Christ and loving one another. That's that commandment to walk in the spirit, that commandment to walk as a child of the light, the commandment of putting off the old man, the commandment of putting on the new man. All of these things and many others are all commandments that are not separate from faith. They are all a byproduct of faith. And this is why he mentions that these two things are the main commandments, faith and love, faith and love. And all of these other commandments, which are the commandments of Christ, the commandments of God are all in between. They're all in between the commandments of faith and love. And so again, that's again, walking as a child of the light is an example of that. And so what 
it ultimately shows is that there is something that when you live by faith in Jesus Christ, if you notice, he continues to say the fruit of something is going to be the result. The fruit as a result of walking in the light, uh, walking as a child of the light, the fruit of goodness and righteousness is going to be and truth is going to be produced in you. As he says in Galatians chapter five, verse 16, if you walk in the spirit, these uh, uh, um, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't have the works of the flesh come to pass and manifest in your life. And again, so even when he mentions scriptures, we talks about, again, these works of the flesh and don't participate in those where well, those are the byproduct of fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And he says here again, but if you walk in the spirit, then you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, so all of those things are byproducts. Again, you not fulfilling the lust of the flesh again is a byproduct of walking in the spirit. And again, all, and, and you fornication, lying, cussing, cheating, all these different things are behaviors that are a byproduct of fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And so it goes all back to the initial domino of faith in Christ that leads to now walking in the spirit and walking in the light. And that leads to ultimately not fulfilling the lust of the flesh and seeing the works of the flesh produced in your life but instead now you'll see the fruit of the spirit produced in your life you'll see as he says over here in ephesians 5 when you walk as a child of the light you'll see goodness and righteousness and truth be the byproduct of that and 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 my point with that is that we have to understand that the obeying of god's commands for us as new testament believers are different from how Old Testament individuals attempted to obey God's commands. The commands in which and how we obey them are what I like to call like a, a vine commanding a branch. It's like a vine commanding a branch. And that's what I want to talk about just for a few more minutes today. Like it, we obey God's commands like a a branch obeying the command of a vine. And you, I know, have heard terminology like that before from Jesus himself. And that's over here in John chapter 15. And look what he says in verse four. He says, abide in me. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So Jesus here presents these disciples and not just them, but all of us as individuals that are what, what relate to the branch and he relates to the vine. And he's saying in the same way that a vine needs to abide in the branch, excuse me, a, a branch needs to abide in the vine. We need to abide in him. And the same way that the only way that that branch produces fruit is if it abides in the vine. The only way we will produce fruit is if we abide in Christ. That's the only way he says in verse five, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him. Look what he says, bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. So he shows us clearly that if you are not abiding in him again, you are not going to produce fruit and that producing fruit. I don't care if you trying to how hard you trying to work and how much you're trying to get yourself together you're being producing fruit is is the same way that a branch produces the fruit is by it clinging to the vine and so what i want to again talk about today is 
that how we obey God's command, the commandments of Christ, that we fulfill the law of Christ, all of that is done in, in the same way that a branch obeys a vine. Oh my, if you can un even understand that, how a branch obeys a vine. And uh, that's how we obey. That's how, how a vine commands a branch. Is how Jesus Christ uh, commands us. It's, it's in the same way that a vine, oh my, I hope you get that. A vine commands a branch. So let's look a little bit in that context of John chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Look what he says. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the fine dresser vine dresser he says every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit then he says what to them he says you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you now here again he's using this uh, of talking about the vine and the branch us being the branch and he says to them you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you and this is speaking of our justification our right standing the fact that we are a branch that is connected to the vine shows that again because of what he is we are because he's righteous again we are righteous we are clean so again this isn't talking about again our right standing with god at all but this is talking about the bearing of fruit and that bearing of fruit he goes on to say in verse four he says abide in me so this branch that we're already hear me you can't be a branch that's uh uh, uh that that's that's uh, uh, that's not connected to the vine, you know, already. I mean, I mean, you're already a, a vine, excuse me, a branch that is connected to the vine already. You're clean already. Look at what he says again in verse two. Every branch in me. So you're already in him. You're already a part of him. But now as a clean person, a person who is justified, a person who is right with God, on the basis because you're connected with the vine you now have to abide in the vine you have to abide in me as jesus says and then he says what's going to happen as a result of you abiding in me i then am going to abide in you and he says well as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in me he says neither can you unless you abide in me well, he says again just like that branch and if you think about a, a tree that may be outside of your house right now you know that there are some trees out there not trees but there are some branches that have fallen off there are some branches that you you'll even see they're they're still attached to the vine or to the the main bark of the tree or the main portion of the tree they're still connected but you don't see fruit on them and the reason being is because they're not clinging to that. There's a disconnect somewhere. And he's saying that that is the same thing with us. We are, again, a part of the tree that is Jesus, the vine. But we have to cling to him. And what does that sound like, abide in me? It means to live by faith in Jesus to trust in him to rely on him to depend upon him to allow the truth of what he has done and accomplished and provided to now be the lens through which i see life i look exclusively to him that's what it means to abide in me and he says what and i am going to abide in you now if you think about oh my i'm trying not to skip ahead i'm trying to do a little bit by a little bit but it's odd my goodness but if uh, uh yeah i go and say it but if you think about no i'm not gonna say it yet i'm not gonna say it let's, let's keep going so he says abide in me and then i am going to abide in you and he connects that to the branch producing fruit you abiding in me and i abiding in you 
And he says, and if that's not happening, then you will not bear fruit. He says, you cannot bear fruit. In verse four, he says, unless it abides in the vine. He says, a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Oh, that's so important. And remember, who's the branches? We are. We cannot bear fruit of ourselves. And hear me, when men tried to live by the Old Testament law, as soon as you live by that old method, remember what we read up here in, in Romans 7. Did I, did I put it up there? And uh, Oh, no, we're supposed to show it in a second. And uh, But when uh, um, we are attempting to serve God, as he says in verse 6, of Romans 7 we're attempting to serve God in the old way of it being self trying to produce fruit that is so important versus the newness of the spirit the newness of the spirit is this new way versus the old way of the letter of the law and so again he says in in verse 5 he says I am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him that's the one who produces fruit the one who abides in me remember now he said in verse one he said in verse two he says every branch in me so you can be in him but not abide in him that's two different things meaning you can be a branch that's a part of the tree but you can be also one that is a part of the tree that's not abiding in him so we again need to abide in Christ and that is a picture of us living by faith in Jesus Christ. Now look at what he goes on to say at the end of at, in verse 5 he says I am the vine you are the branches he or who abides in me and I in him what does that person do that person bears much fruit. He says for without me you can do nothing. Oh my that is so important. Just like a branch cannot produce fruit, cannot do anything that is of God unless it is abiding in the vine. Now, I want you all to think about it for a second. When you if you understand how, again, a a vine commands a branch and causes it to produce fruit, what does it do? Think about it for a second. Let's say an apple tree out, out there it, where you have that branch that clings to the vine. And what does that allow? It allows for the vine to take the nectar that is of it and now push it through that branch. And then at the end of that branch, what happens? You have fruit produced. You have fruit produced as a byproduct of the nectar of the vine flowing on the inside of that branch and all that branch is doing is clinging oh jesus clinging to the vine that's all that branch is doing that vine getting that branch to obey the command to produce fruit isn't doing so outwardly by telling that branch hey you need to produce fruit. You need to produce fruit. You need to do this. You need to do this. No, that branch is obeying the command of that vine to produce fruit by what that vine is producing on the inside of it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I hope you hear me. By what that that nectar that is from the vine is now being pushed on the inside of that branch and that branch then is bearing the fruit of that nectar that's being produced on the inside of it oh jesus and he's saying it's the same way with us in the same way that we obey the command to bear fruit excuse me that this branch obeys the command to bear fruit by allowing the nectar from the vine to flow in it as that branch clings to the vine we as well cling to jesus and the nectar of who he is oh jesus is going to flow on the inside of us and it's going to manifest out of us as fruit 
fruit now that now will be of the vine of jesus christ oh my see i skipped ahead and i didn't want to but let's keep going look at verse six of what he says he says if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is with it this is another one of those scriptures uh that we're gonna uh to unwind uh that people again uh, misuse but we ain't gonna touch it right now he says uh and they gathered them and throw them into the fire and they are burned now look at what he says here if you abide in me again and my words abide in you oh my you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples Oh my. So he shows us here and adds another caveat to it. He says in verse 7, if you abide in me and what's going to abide in you? My words. My words. Again, and if you remember what we read earlier up here in John chapter 16, where it says here that what the Spirit of God say, I'm skipping all over the place. I'm trying to calm down. But he says what? The Holy Spirit is going to, in verse 14, take the things that belong to Jesus and declare it to you. He's going to take the words of Christ. Now, again, the words of Christ uh, or what he says here in John chapter 15, when he says, what well, if my words abide in you, what are my words? They are the words that speak of who I am and what I've done and what I've accomplished on your behalf. It's the gospel. It's the good news. And I've said this on many occasions, but the gospel isn't just the simple fact that Jesus died and that he was buried and he was raised. But it was what was accomplished, what was provided. How does it affect your life? His death on the cross. How does it again lead uh, to your right standing with God and your again favor before God? And, and, and again, and you're no longer having to attempt to get yourself together and fix yourself. See, all of that is the good news and much more. Well, all of that is the word of Christ that he's saying, uh, let it abide in you. Well, how, how is it abiding in you when you live by faith in him and you constantly are allowing the truth of who he is and what he has done again to now be poured into your heart as your heart looks to Jesus and you're constantly being fed with the truth of who he is. He, that's his word abiding in you oh my jesus and just like again uh what now that vine takes of it and forms on the inside of that branch it starts to now formulate and become something oh jesus it starts to formulate well that word of god now that of that word of christ that word that speak of who christ is and what he has done starts to now be developed and formed in you and it's formed into something oh jesus it's formed in, into something and it speaks of him it speaks of him and there's there are multiple analogies that speak of this similar process and this another uh, example is with a seed of a husband being planted into his wife look over here in Romans chapter 7 verse 4 look what it says it says therefore my brethren you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ why that you may be married to another now just for context sake uh, uh in in verse one through three he talked about the fact that we were married to the law specifically the jews and he said that we were in a way or they were in a way married to the law where now again they were operating in this intimate relationship with the law where they took the seed of the law which are the commandments and planted those in their hearts as a wife. Oh, Jesus, I hope you hear me. They, are, they were uh, like a wife 
uh, to the law where they took the seed through intimacy. They took the seed of the law and planted that in their heart and attempted to produce fruit with that. Well, he says now through Christ, we're dead to the law. We're dead to that old way that we read earlier. And now, now why? He says so that we could now in verse four, he says that you may be married to another. So we were married to the law, the Jews specifically. But now we are married to Christ. And look at what he says to him who was raised from the dead. Why? That we should bear fruit to God. So now he says through this marital relationship with Jesus, we're going to pr produce fruit that is unto God. Well, remember in this analogy, we are the wife. We are the one now as Jesus is the husband who now through intimacy with him we allow the seed of who he is and this is what jesus is speaking of in john chapter 15 when he says my word abiding in you and again i don't want to get too graphic but when a husband and a wife comes together again and the seed of that husband is now planted on the inside of that wife what happens after nine months she bears fruit that is of that husband the fruit of what we call the fruit of my loins that's what my children are the fruit of my loins well again jesus is saying here that now through us allowing the seed of who christ is that carries his dna of what he did this gospel message this preaching of jesus as we allow that truth to be poured into our hearts his word and we allow his word to abide in us as we allow that to take place what's going to happen that seed is going to start to develop on the inside of us as something and then it's ultimately going to give uh, bring forth fruit in our lives that looks like the one who is the seed giver <laughs> that the 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 fruit uh, uh the baby that's going to be produced is going to look like uh it's going to it's going to carry the dna of the seed giver it's going to carry the dna of jesus christ oh my and again, and, and so another thing of it is, though, when that seed is planted versus when that seed is given birth to, that seed looks different, very, very different. And so the seed here that's planted is, again, what? Christ's word, the gospel, the good news of what Jesus Christ has done and what he's provided. That's how it's planted. Well, it's going to now develop on the inside of us as something. Well, again, that nectar, uh, again, just as the example of the branch and the vine, is what's going to now start to develop on the inside of, of that branch. And it's ultimately going to produce fruit. That fruit doesn't look like the nectar. It looks different, but it stems from the nectar. And uh, it's the same thing with us. That word of Christ abiding in us is going to now develop in some, into something. Just like when that husband plants that seed on the inside of his wife, that, that seed develops into something that looks totally different than what was planted on the inside of, of him. And, and it shows us here what that is. Look over here in Galatians chapter 2, starting at verse 20. It says, this is Paul speaking. And this is right after, and I wish I had put it in there, in verse 19, Paul says what? I, through the law, died to the law. This is in verse 19. I didn't put it up here. He says, uh, uh, I, through the law, died to the law that I might live unto God. And then he goes on to say in verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. Doesn't that sound very, very similar to what we just read over here in Romans chapter 7? Where he says, what? Well, Therefore, my brother, you have become dead to the law. When well, verse 19, he says the same thing. And he speaks in verse 20 of us being dead, us being crucified. He, I've mentioned this on many occasions as well. The Bible is saying the same things 511 ways. <laughs> For my country folks, you, you know what that means. A thousand different ways. The Bible is saying the same thing. 
And so when he says here, I have been crucified with Christ, it's saying the same thing as he says in Romans 7. When he says, I have died uh, through the body of Christ. I have died to the law. And so he goes on to say, well, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Oh, my. Now, let me say something here. That word lives is the exact same Greek word as abide. When Jesus says up here, abide in me. And we already said what that is. What that is a person living by faith in Jesus. And then he says what? And I am going to abide in you. Well, he shows us first what? It's the seed uh, or the word that abides in, in us. But look at what he says here in Galatians 2. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. I'm dead. But now Christ abides in me. Christ lives in me. Christ dwells in me. The word uh, there for lives is the same word that's translated as abide. And it's also translated as dwell in the next scripture that we're about to read. Uh, but he goes on to say, he says, but Christ lives in me. Now, Christ living in me is him talking about him abiding in me back up here in John chapter four, uh, 15, excuse me, verse four. When he says abide in me and I in you, that is Christ in us. Well, Paul is talking about that here. Christ living in me and I want you guys to see it from the standpoint of a vine and a branch a vine again causes now the nectar uh, that comes from it that carries its DNA that is carries who it is on the inside of that branch well Jesus who is the vine allows the the nectar of who he is to be formed in us and it's the same analogy when it comes to the marriage uh, the marriage uh, um, uh, example when again a man a husband plants his seed in his in his wife and conception takes place that seed again develops into something that looks just like him that carries his DNA again it's the same analogy and the same example what well, he's saying here Christ lives in me. Christ is developed and formed in me. And look what he says. And the life which I now live in the flesh. This life where he just said is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. How do I live this life? I live it by faith. <laughs> in the son of God who loved me and gave himself. I live it by abiding in Christ by living by faith in Jesus by clinging to him and as a result of that he dwells on the inside of me he lives in me and not just in me but through me he now as a result of the seed of the gospel is like a baby that is now formed on the inside of me oh my that is now that dwells on the inside of me and eventually just like it comes with a natural uh, um birth uh, of, a, of a baby after that baby has developed it is now given birth to well it's the same thing with us we're going to give birth to the as it says here we're going to bear fruit that is going to be unto God and that fruit is going to be of Christ it's going to be fruit that is of him again and so how is all of this happening though it's happening when we simply cling to the vine when we simply cling to Jesus and look exclusively, exclusively to him, all of this takes place on the inside of us. And Ephesians chapter 3 helps us to see that even more. Look at verse 16. And this is again in the middle of a, a, um, a prayer that Paul was praying. He said, "What? Um, this is my prayer that he, speaking of God, would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might that word might is power he says through his spirit in the inner man and look at what is going to happen as a result of being strengthened with might 
by the spirit of God in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through what? Through faith. So he shows us here that, excuse me, that you being rooted and grounded in love. And he continues to go on to say some other things. But I want us to notice here what he says. He says that there's this strengthening that takes place on the inside of you by the spirit of God that now forms Christ on the inside of you that he may dwell. That word dwell is the same word abide that we read in John 15 and the same word lives that we read in Galatians chapter 2. It's the same word. They just they just translated it here as dwell. It could have said that Christ may abide in you or Christ may live in you. He could have said any one of those and all. But my point is that he connects the Holy Spirit strengthening you with might and power on the inside in your inner man as Christ now being formed and developed in your heart. And he does all of this through what's your role? Faith. What's your role with this? Trusting in Jesus, living by faith in Jesus Christ. He says here, the spirit of God is going to, to form Christ on the inside of you. And again, I want y'all to get this picture. Just think about from the, the aspect of the, the, the vine and the branch. Well, again, that there's on the inside of that branch as that nectar is flowing in that branch. That nectar now is being formed into something. And being developed into something while it's on the inside of that branch so that now it can produce fruit or we can look at the analogy of the marriage well now that that seed is planted on the inside of that wife that seed is being developed developed on the inside to 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 someone who looks like the father who carries the dna of the father well, he's saying it's the exact same thing here. And that one who does this work on the inside of us, a forming Christ on the inside of us is the Holy Spirit. He takes now that seed of the gospel that now we have believed and trusted in Jesus Christ through and cling to him through. He takes that seed and starts to develop Christ on the inside of us. And Christ on the inside of us, and it, and I didn't put it in here, but in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And, and that fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, all these different things, temperance. All these different things are all what make up who Christ is on the inside of you. It's the character of Christ. Every last drop of it. That love is Christ's love. That joy is Christ's joy. That peace is Christ's peace on the inside of you. And all of these things make up who Christ is. And they are developed on the inside of you by the Spirit of God. When you simply live by faith in Jesus Christ. Oh my, I'm trying to, again, show you guys how we now obey the commands. We, we obey the commands, again, in the same way a branch obeys the commands of a vine. We obey the commands to bear fruit uh, um, and give birth to a baby in, this, uh, uh, in the same way a wife obeys the command of her husband to bear fruit uh, of his seed by what simply allowing that seed to be planted and develop on the inside by not closing herself off to her husband but simply again opening herself i'm trying not to be too graphic but to 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 to, to behold the glory of her husband <laughs> of her husband and look to him and through that she will bear fruit not by her going over in the corner and saying i gotta try to do this i gotta try to do that i gotta try to get this and make this happen no the obedience comes as a result of our job of living by faith in christ 
And the Spirit of God does the work on the inside of us that causes the commands of the, of Jesus Christ to manifest as fulfilled in our lives. Oh my. And so he shows us here in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 that what Christ is going to dwell on the inside of us. Again, he's going to abide in us. He's going to live in us as it says in Galatians 2. Again, all through faith and it's going to be a work by the spirit of God to form this character of who Christ is on the inside of us. It's going to be a work of the spirit of God to do so. And look over here in Colossians chapter 1. We almost done. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Look at this. He says, "For this reason, we also since the day we heard it." And here's another prayer by Paul. If you really see again, Paul is constantly praying ultimately that you give birth to Christ in this world. That's really his ultimate prayers. But look what he says. He says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, look what he says. This is the prayer that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him and being fruitful in every good work. Doesn't this sound a lot like? Again, him talking about the fruit over in John chapter 15. Doesn't it sound a lot like that? Where he says again, you're going to bear fruit. He's, and, and even in, in 1 John chapter 3, when he talks about, again, you keeping his commandment and doing those things that are pleasing in his sight. Well, he says here in Colossians chapter 1, this is my prayer that you walk worthy of the lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god and look what he says strengthen with all might now what does that sound like what well, we just read in ephesians chapter 3 where he says the spirit of god is going to strengthen you in the inner man with might well, he says this is the prayer that this happens. And he says what well, you're going to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. But look what that glorious power and that might is for. It's for patience, for long suffering, with joy. Notice all of those are fruit of the spirit. Notice what he, I hope you all see the connection. He's saying what? That we already said that that power and being strengthened with that power is going to form Christ on the inside of you by the spirit of god and that and christ on the inside of you is going to be his love his patience his long suffering his joy his peace where well, he shows us here that you being strengthened with those things he says again is going to be for patience to manifest in your life long suffering joy and these are just a few but we know the fruit of the spirit goodness kindness all of these different things he mentions and he connects them though to being strengthened with all might by the spirit of god well when does he do that he does that again through faith as it says in verse 17 of ephesians 3 that christ may dwell in your heart as a result of you being strengthened with might by the spirit christ is going to dwell in your hearts through faith that character again that nectar that's of the vine, which is Christ, is going to be formed in you by the Spirit of God when you simply live by faith in Jesus Christ. And then what's going to happen as a result of that? Well, verse 10, that's what he was talking about. You're going to walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Why? Because it's Christ now manifesting not you not you doing your best not you trying your best not you trying to get it together not you trying to fix this not you trying to live by law but now simply because you live by faith in christ the holy spirit is doing this work on the inside of you that now is going to affect your walk it's going to affect how you live because the character of christ is going to be formed on the inside of you and how you are going to obey is in the same way a branch obeys a vine a branch obeys a vine 
by simply the nectar of the vine flowing on the inside of it and producing fruit out of that branch. That branch uh, that doesn't need to hear. You need to produce fruit. You need to produce fruit. You need to produce fruit. You know what that branch needs to hear? You need to abide in the vine. You need to cling exclusively to the vine. You need to look only to the vine and everything else that needs to happen is going to work on the inside of you. It's going to be formed on the inside of you. That is the work of the Spirit of God as we read uh, back over here in Ephesians chapter 3. And there's so many other scriptures that talk about the Spirit of God do doing this work of forming Christ in us again just like that baby once that seed is planted in that wife there's something that goes on on the inside of that wife that now develops a human being from a seed hear me that's something again you you uh, uh, uh elephant uh, uh there's a, a seed that is planted in the female ele ele elephant that now forms this big old huge elephant and it starts with a little seed. Well, it's the same thing with us. It starts with simply the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The seed that tells us the good news and carries the DNA of Jesus Christ. And when we allow that to be formed in our hearts, when that's our focus, our hearts are open like a wife open to her husband. Our hearts are open to the truth of Jesus Christ and what he has done and allowing that to flow. The spirit of God is going to take that and form, take that DNA of Christ and form him on the inside of us in the same way that that vine uh, takes the nectar that is of it and forms it through the branch forms it on the inside of it first by that nectar but then now outward out of that branch is going to be formed fruit that is a direct uh, uh, link to the vine when the same way the fruit that we're going to bear the fruit of the spirit the the character the life that we manifest is the life of christ it's the character of christ it's who he is on the inside of us and this is why he's saying over here in first john chapter 3 verse 23 that our commandments again are what faith in the lord jesus christ verse 23 and love and and what we talked about today are all these commandments that are it sandwiched in between those two that's why, again, and they are all the byproduct. And again, that's why I kept pointing to that. They're the byproduct of faith in Jesus Christ. The every last thing, just like uh, um, the fruit that the branch produces is the byproduct of it abiding in the vine. Not anything else. Not it through its willpower trying to produce. No, again, it clinging and looking exclusively to the vine is what now causes for that vine for that branch to be able to bear fruit it's the same thing it, it obeys the commands of the vine by it simply first clinging to the vine and then that's the same thing with us as we believe on the name of the son of his son jesus christ we trust in him and look exclusively to him again every all the other commandments are going to manifest and then look at what he says and love one another and this is the, the thing and we're going to talk about this next week the love portion is simply taking that fruit and using it for the benefit of your brothers and your sisters that's all it is that's all love. he's saying this as you live by faith in me i'm going to form some things on the inside of you i'm going to develop some things on the inside of you i'm going to form self-control and, and and the character of peace and joy and kindness and goodness and this is what i want you to do with it i want you to take those things that i form in you and have a focus of loving your brother through those things that i do 
in you. Not in your willpower, not you trying to love. No, you take the fruit that I'm going to form in you and you now distribute it out to your brothers and sisters in the, and, 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 and a, for, a, for their good, for their unconditional good and for their benefit. That's what it's all about. And we're going to talk about that more next week. But I had to show that the commandments, again, that the scriptures oftentimes speak of, that so many people make something other than, they make it just like Old Testament commandments instead of understanding that, no, these commandments are the commandments that are going to be obeyed by simply trusting in Christ. And then now, as a result of that, you're going to see all of these other commands you keep. You're going to walk in the spirit. You're going to walk in, in the light. You're going to put off the old man. You're going to put on the new man. You're going to do all of those things. And then now with what Christ forms in us, use it for the purpose of love. My, my. I hope you guys are well blessed by that and that you understand that. Definitely, if you have any questions about it, reach out to me. But I think that this is so important because God is saying we have to get out of our will and our strength. It's just like a branch trying to produce fruit by itself and on its own. When we're in our willpower and our strength to try to make ourselves do right and get ourselves together, we, we're going down a trap that will never be good. But God is saying, no, as you trust in the one whom I've sent to you, then you will see this work on the inside of you that now what leads to the behavior. See, that's what people don't don't get it. They are so focused on the behavior and they don't understand what leads to the behavior, what leads to the fornication, the lying, the cussing, the, the cheating, all this other stuff that that that's something that's not merely a, simply a decision. It's a byproduct of something that is formed on the inside of us. And, and God is saying, I want to form something different on the inside of you. And that's my son. But I only can do that when you live by faith in me. And faith in what I've done in sending my son on your behalf. And as you do that, I'll do a work on the inside of you. And whatever what I'm producing in you, how I'm renewing you, how I'm changing you, how I'm developing you. Let your focus be that this in which God is doing is for the purpose of loving my brothers and my sisters out there. That's the whole premise, the whole goal. So, my God, I hope you guys were blessed. This is, again, a recording, so I can't check to see if uh, anybody uh, is... Uh, is commenting because again it'll be later on so i hope you guys were blessed by it. if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything like that definitely reach out to me and we'll uh, get into it god bless you guys and i will see you next time